Howdy. I'm going to be attempting to explain my method to start doing custom models in Shipwreck Canyon. This whole guide is meant to act supplementary to Peyton's guide, I believe that's how you pronounce the name. Don't exactly know, but he's a good guy, he taught me a lot. Uh, it may not be the most modern approach, but I have zero clue how to do this without that guide. I'm new to Blender, new to modding, I don't know how to do any of this, so I just use that guy, that guy's guide, so I'm going to set you up for that guide. There's certain parts that I that just didn't work because his was like about seven months ago and lots of things changed and I tried a lot of stuff and I think I finally have it down to where there's about no issues or maybe very few. Okay so first order of business. I'm using VirtualBox, a virtual machine, for Ubuntu. It is the easiest for me. I, I just thought it was the best I could have done. You can also use WSL but I cannot help as much with WSL or if you just have Ubuntu natively installed that works too. Debian also works, there's a specific version on the download page where you want to try to go for those things, but this is just my approach to doing this. We're doing all this so that we can produce a decompilation of Ocarina of Time, specifically an old one because that is what Fast64 likes using a lot more and what the guide goes by. So here I will post a link in the description of the repo, it has all the instructions in just a list format and you just follow it to a T essentially, just enter the command to do a terminal and that's it. There's one change that I will do, and technically another one, that I will provide in the description, and you just need to follow that guide, and I'll show you how to do it. But most of these I already have installed, and unfortunately, I I hate when tutorials do this, but it shouldn't be too much different. I'm still going to put them into my terminal, and you should see what it's kind of like. Uh, anyway, we're going to go and start a terminal now. Alright, so first order of business is just to run the commands. Do it all right here. You can click the Picard button. And you gotta know your password, but I expect that. If you run into a sudo command, that means that it's an issue with Ubuntu and you need to do some boot options, and that's easily Googleable. If you need help, I can do that. But as for now, you're just gonna hit into both of these things and just let it run. It might take a second, but it shouldn't take too long. And you can see a little difference in mine that it says that it's not really upgraded, it's the newest version. You're just probably gonna say something different. This is where you just clone the repository. Now the thing about cloning repositories is that in your clone, it contains all the versions of this whatever you downloaded, including the past ones. However, you need to set it to make sure that we're accessing that old one, which is what we're about to do after this. Cloning might take a second because again, we're cloning the entire repository, but after we're done with this, then we will set it to the old version. Okay, so now that that's done, you need to enter the directory of this, which you can do by just hitting cd oot. And then once you do that, we're going to run our own command. So this is the main deviation from the original instructions. I will provide this in the description so that you can easily copy paste it. But what it is, is git, and then checkout, and then 21cb04d. Once you hit that, or enter it, it's going to migrate to the old version. So the next important change, and the last one, is that you need to supply your own ROM. It has to be a MasterQuest debug ROM, as it states here. And in the, in the new version, it is called Base ROM, or at least that's what you have to name it. In this one, there's a readme file, but none of that matters, you don't need to read it. All that matters is that we are going to name our ROM, specifically, Base ROM underscore original instead. That's very important. And you will put this inside the root of your repository, which just means where it says oot, you're going to click on that, and when you see a bunch of other stuff, it's where you, where you put it. It's actually where I have open. So now I'm going to open a new window for my files, and I'm going to navigate to where my ROM is. It is still zipped, and I've tried many, but this is the one that I found that worked. I can't, of course, give you that, but all you're going to do is just move it to the directory I was talking about a second ago. And I actually do it twice, doesn't matter. Essentially, you need one that's non-tampered with, and of course the debug, USA, whatever, it doesn't have to be USA. Uh, it's not really able to tell whether it's tampered with it until you're like done with the process and it says, oh, this is okay, or this isn't. Uh, you're just going to try it, and if it works, it works, it doesn't, it doesn't. You just keep doing it. Uh, anyway, right now, you're going to rename the ROM inside of that directory to what's inside the readme file, or as I said earlier, base ROM underscore original. So if I type this out right, like this. Just rename it and you're done. And now you can go back to your terminal 
and then after that you can run the next command. At this point, everything different is done and you just need to follow the instructions like normal. There's nothing else. So we're going to go to a terminal and we're going to run make setup. And then it's going to do a bunch of things, downloading whatever, not even downloading, it's going to be extracting things, I believe. I don't entirely know everything that's happening, I'm, I'll be the first to admit. And same with everything I'm saying, I don't know if I'm being correct about all this. However, it's what works, and I know the process to do it, just not, I just don't know what's going on. And I'm not afraid to admit that. Anywho, uh, this is going to run for a fair amount of time, and the next one probably even longer. And I could just show you the rest of it, but it's just going to be your terminal just going down in lines and just printing out whatever. Uh, so I'm probably just going to end up skipping this because you're not really going to gain anything from seeing this. It will say this file was found and it's going to extract it. That's just what's going to happen. So I'm just going to skip to when it gives me control back at the terminal and this make setup step is done. Okay. So that step is now done, and we are going to now just run the last command, which is simply make. This is going to take the longest out of all steps, and you can speed it up, but we'll, I'll talk about that in just a second with threads. Uh, so firstly, once you're done with this step, it will give you either an OK sign, meaning that your ROM worked, or a failed sign, which most likely means you need to go scavenge for it, or get another ROM, and see if that works. If it says OK, everything is good, and you're fine. So anyway, about speeding up, you can give it more threads, but as it states here, that might be a little risky as it can cause some errors or some sort of issues, and I'd rather just sacrifice the time now rather than have it mess up later and have to come back and redo this whole process. It's pretty much saving time uh, in the long run. Uh, so as I stated, I'm in a virtual, I'm using VirtualBox, which also allows me to use a shared folder, which allows me just to take the decomp I just did and then just send it to my OS. It's that simple. If there's some sort of error with links or some Ubuntu thing to Linux to Windows, you can compress it and that should work. It worked the time it happened or the error appeared for me and I didn't see any issues. I don't think it should happen for this old decomp, but just in case you can do that. Besides that, all you have to do is just wait for this terminal end, send it to yourself or send it to wherever or just even if you're using the Ubuntu by default, just keep it there. Uh, and then you get to continue to the next step, which is not about the decomp. It is about Fast64. Alright, so about Fast64, there's three forks of it that we can use, a decomp fix, which we should not need because we got the old decomp, although it was very polite of someone to make it for us. There's also the most recent build and the legacy build. I'm going to opt to download both, both the recent and legacy build because I believe both can be useful even if we're going to be using legacy build most often. To download Fast64, you're just going to hit the code button here, and then you're going to hit download zip. It is that simple, you do not even need to extract it, that's all you need to do. And if you scroll down, you're going to find that it says old version of HM fork here, you just click here, and now this is where the legacy one is, download that, do the exact same thing. And then once you download that, you are done, and we can move directly into Blender, that's it. Moving into Blender, I do not have much else to say, you should be following the guide for most of the rest of it, but I have a few things to say. So if you go to edit and preferences and then search for fast64, you will have two versions. I have three because I have a decomp fix. The one without SOH is the legacy version. That's the one you want. It should be version 2.0. The SOH version is 2.20, but just use the legacy version for the entire time you're modeling. The model I downloaded came as an FBX and that gave me an error when I tried to import it into Blender. Uh, and it's just an FBX error, so I was able to download this FBX converter. Do not download this unless you need it, so don't download it beforehand, but I will provide it in the description. If it's some sort of other area, you can probably google it and find it. One command that's easy to find, but it just didn't say it, is the conjoin command, which we'll have to do later. So let's say if I want to just give this, give this square a party hat. Uh, if you select both, and then hit control J, it will conjoin them together, and then you can move it around. This is useful for when you make the hand models for Link, if that's what you're doing, or other things. Okay, so first off, don't question what about the import. You do not understand the lengths I go to and my friends. Anywho, once you import your thing, there's a couple of things that he didn't mention that probably could not run into him that will be pretty important. So yours can come already rigged with bones or an armchair, whatever they call it. 
So what I have to do is, you might be able to work with them. I'm not smart enough to do that, so I just ended up deleting them. Now, there's a weird thing that happens when you delete them. So if I do that right now, this is what happens. But another important thing also besides that, is that when you spawn a new model, it might already be parented to something. Which is important. So as soon as you spawn in, clear that parent. And then I delete the bones again, just just to do so. Because that you would need to be very specific about your bones later on. But just delete them now. So his model does this too. And a and a good thing to like snap it exactly is you hit the R key and then whichever access XYZ. So I opted with hit an X here and then I just typed in a number. I hit 90 and it worked perfectly fine. You can do whatever, it's just so that you can snap angles correctly and have it be positioned perfect. When you select your decomp path, it's the same way he does it, but I'm just going to show you. Go to wherever it's extracted, and you'll find that root folder, just whatever. And you're going to click that twice, go into the folder, and once you get to all this random stuff, that's where you hit accept. And once you do that, you should be all set up to go. And now you're able to just go to the uh, the skeleton importer and do the usual accept adult link and then do all that and then just import them in and it will take a bit of a second like he says on new things it doesn't but this one just does and then you have to look out I'm gonna delete this big guy uh, you have to look out for textures because when I did this before I got a lot of black textures and things and a lot of people have that I think that just means a bad decomp it might still work but if you get this, this just means everything works fine according to this tutorial. So let me quickly just delete all the LOD stuff just so I can mess around with it in a second. Uh, and that these. Okay. So now is the last thing I'm going to talk about, which is the animations, which is the whole reason why we downloaded two fast 64s. So now we're going to try to import an animation. Uh, so paste all the names and also the is link button. Make sure to hit that. And then we're going to select the bone. And then once we try to import it, it's going to give us this error. It's a Python error. Someone's trying to fix this. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to edit and preferences once again. And you go to your fast64 and you're going to deselect the legacy one and select the new one. And then you're going to have to, you might need to set this game. Uh, sorry, you might need to set the game to oot again. And then you're going to try this again after selecting bone. And this time it should work. I'm going to stress this part. Do not change your fast 64 version until you're entirely done with your modeling process. I don't know if it caused an error. And it might have for me. Or it might have been something unrelated. But just to be safe, do it when you're entirely done rigging and doing all that stuff. And then mess with the animations to tweak. The actual real last thing to say is that. In Peyton's guide, he uses an old retro version. I do not think it has the slightest bearing on anything. Just make sure that when you're exporting, you export it as an OTR, not an O2R. OTRs are for Ocarina of Time, while the other one's for Majora's Mask. Besides that, I hope this guide is good enough. It's, I'm not good at these things, but hopefully you got something from it. Just, just make some cool mods. That's it. Have fun.